Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the Market Now as of about 10.30 a.m. Eastern on Friday, July 22nd. As you know, we are smack dab in the middle of second quarter earnings season. So U.S. stocks are flat this morning as disappointing results from industrials, including General Electric, decreased investors' optimism about earnings and prevented Wall Street from aiming for new highs, at least so far today. After reporting earnings this morning, GE, long considered our bellwether for the U.S. economy, dropped 2.2% to $31.85. Another drag on the sector was Honeywell, falling 4.8% after it lowered its full-year sales forecast. Boeing and Caterpillar fell more than 1%. The S&P 500 and the Dow, however, are trading near record highs on what has been positive sentiment towards second quarter corporate earnings, with analysts now expecting smaller profit declines and more companies topping those estimates. And now for some insight into what could go on this week, let's look at three charts. First of all, we're going to look at a chart as we usually do of our S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. This is the ETF that tr closely tracks our S&P 500 uh, index. We use this because it is a tradable and because we do have volume on it. Okay, and volume tells a lot, especially right now. Now, as we look at our S&P or our S&P 500 uh, SPY right now, we see that when I've captured this chart this morning, it's trading at $216.29. That's right around $21.62 on the S&P 500 itself. We note here, if you can see it, that Wednesday, a couple of days ago, we made uh, the SPY made an all-time high of $217.37. So that's pretty good. Uh, and 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 so what we have here is the SPY trading at quite a premium to its red line, the 20-day simple moving average, the green line, the 50-day simple moving average, and of course the black line, the 200-day moving average. If we look down here uh, on the middle scare, scale at our 14-day RSI, we can see that the 14-day RSI is no longer moving higher. It's actually gone kind of flat. Also interesting that it is at a lower level here, not quite as overbought as it was back in June and back in April and May when the SPY is was trading at, at, at actually lower prices, although high for those periods. So at any rate here, we want to keep an eye on the SPY. We can see that it's consolidating sideways here and has been for a longer time than sometimes we see. Uh, actually, for the last seven days, it's been moving exactly sideways. What we do have is we can see support at about $215 here, just under this consolidation low. We can call this a bull flag. Uh, especially if the SPY can break higher here, move above 218, 218 or 2180 on the S&P 500 itself. If it can do that and continue this trend higher into the end of July and the first part of August, that will be great. However, if it can't, I could see it moving back down here. We had the uh, June highs at $212.52, and that kind of level right there would be a logical place for a pullback to, to, to get price support. We also have a level here at our April highs um, at $211, which is right back here. And this $211, if I could uh, draw a line straight across, you would see that the SPY has found support there uh, before. It used to be resistance, has now could be potential, potential price support. So what I could see here, if I were to just take a, a guess, 
with everything we have going on in this world, with oil prices moving decidedly lower, of course, we have big supply, uh, but also we see global growth slowing. So if the SPY does decide to come back in here, I could see it trading right around maybe in a range between 2010 or even 205 or 2050 on the S&P 500, maybe trading in a range for July and August. But please remember, that's only a guess. That's only a guess. Of course, uh, what I would prefer is that the SPY would break higher here and continue its uptrend. That would be certainly more enjoyable for all of us. What I have noticed down here, uh, look at the volume with me, please, that in the last week, while the S&P has been trading sideways, um, it hasn't had a burst of energy. It hasn't had a burst of volume yet. We need strong volume to absorb the supply at these levels up at 216, 217. We need a spurt of volume to take this index higher. So far, volume has been very, very low. Making new highs on low volume is not my favorite way to do it. That's like having a very loud party and, and, the, and, and the, the noise is made by only a few people. So actually, it's not as powerful as it sounds. Let's keep an eye on the SPY, and I'll show you another way to do that in our next chart. Our next chart here is a chart we look at quite a bit in the market now. It's the iShares Russell 2000 ETF symbol the symbol IWM. Of course, the Russell 2000 is the small cap index. Uh, this is the index where most of the stocks are US centric. Most of them are uh, obviously small caps. Many of them do not trade outside of the United States. Their goods and services uh, are, are pretty much <clears throat> uh, stay right here in, in, in this country. So this is a way of looking at our domestic, our domestic attitude right now. We can see that the IWM has been making actually a very unusual bull flag here. We can call it a bull flag. It's unusual for the IWM to consolidate sideways uh, for so many days in a row. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and today would make nine days in a row that the IWM is moving just, just in a tiny, tiny range uh, between 1850 and 120, just back and forth and back and forth. Of course, as we know, consolidations are pressure cookers. We've got a lid on a pot that's steaming. We have the bears pushing it down. We have the bulls pushing it up. Somebody's going to blink, and we don't know if it's going to be the bears or the bulls. So we'll have to find that out by waiting to see uh, whether earnings season or some kind of exogenous shock comes in and takes it one way or the other. Now, the, uh, the all-time high on the IWM was $129.10. That was in June of 2015. So the IWM is not trading at its highs. Its highs were last year a little over a year ago, uh, again at 129 and change. So in fact, uh, although it, it's been much stronger in the years from 2009 to 2015, it has been, it has outperformed the S&P 500 in the last year, not so much. That hasn't happened. The, S, the IWM is actually uh, down off of its highs. It's not at all-time highs. So I'm watching this. Many times we can use this, this uh, index, this, this exchange-traded fund in this case, as a leading indicator for our broader market, our broader market meaning the S&P 500 um, and, and the Dow and the NASDAQ all rolled into one. So the IWM, and again, moving sideways, can it break above 120? Or is it going to need to fall back down here and, and look at support at 115 where the 50-day moving average is coming in? Or even down a little lower at, say, 112. Again, what we have here is we have seven, eight days of very low volume. The bulls are pushing it. The bears are pushing it down. The bulls are pushing it up. Very, very low volume here as it consolidates. So if we can get a burst of positive volume, 
they can push it up through uh, the overhead resistance, push it through and up, absorb the supply of the bears that are trying to push it down. Then maybe this uptrend continues. Uh, if the bears are stronger than the bulls here, however, it again, it may have to move down and retest. And again, I could see it, if it does have to do that, moving sideways or um, moving in a range between, say, 112 and 120 for the remainder of the summer. And to me, that would be good news. That's doable. It's far preferable to a move down below 110. Okay, so that is the IWM. I will keep an eye on it for an indicator to the broader market. Finally today, let's look at a ETF that may be something we want to keep an eye on in upcoming weeks. This is the XBI. This is the Spider S&P Biotech ETF. Top components in this are Tessaro, Biogen, Biomarin, Serepta Therapeutics, Amgen, those big biotech stocks. Now, some things about biotechs. First of all, biotechs do not trade. If you look, it doesn't look like the S&P 500. It doesn't look like the NASDAQ, although biotechs are usually NASDAQ stocks. Uh, but the, the biotechs do not trade in concert with, in the long term, they don't trade in concert with the broader market. They move up and down more on clinical trials. Uh, also, and um, I like ETFs. I, I like to be in biotech, but I like to be in exchange-traded funds, a biotech exchange-traded funds, because they are naturally diversified, of course, so they don't involve me in the day-to-day -day volatility that is so inherent in biotech stocks. Again, depending on their clinical trials, they can fly much higher or fall much lower. I'm looking at the XBI here as it, it moved down to its lows in February, like many, many companies did. Then it started back up here, and since the middle of March, it's been moving in a nice uptrend, actually moving in a pretty definable channel here. The lows here that are from May and July lows are about 49, 49.50, 49.60, but each, each low has been a little higher, more or less, by a few cents. And we see this higher channel line here. Uh, the June 2nd high was $59 and Hold on, 87 cents. That's what I'm looking for right here, 59.87. So we have it moving here basically between 49.50 and 60. The channel line is rising now. When I captured the XBI this morning, it was trading at $58.95, just above, finally, just above its 200-day moving average. The 50-day and 20-day are coming up, rising from below. That's a good thing. Um, it has the last two days have had pretty darn high volume on it. The MACD is just above the zero line. That's good. The RSI is positive. That's good. So what I'm going to do here, not necessarily buying it now or today, but I'm going to keep an eye on the XBI as we move through earnings season. If it can move up, what I want it to do is break up above this upper channel line, up above $61 then I think it may have the potential in a positive market to move higher, possibly up into 65, 70 area over time. I really do believe that biotech companies and certainly pharmaceuticals, their colleagues, are, are, are the wave of the future for expansion. We're going to see things in our lifetime that I think are going to be very, very exciting. So keep an eye on the XBI. I have to tell, um, tell you that if it moves or falls below its 50-day moving average, which comes in here at about $56, if it moves below that, I am no longer interested. So know that that is my line in the sand. It is not negotiable for me. So as long as it stays above 55, I'm looking for it to move higher. If that doesn't happen, I'll wait and see what happens as long as it stays above that 50-day moving average. Now we'll go on to next week's economic reports. But first, I want to tell you 
that we are currently offering a 20% discount on Tony's Market Club for the first month of your membership. This offer is only good through this weekend. After that, it ends. So don't miss out. We only make this offer a couple of times a year. So, with that said, please check us out and join us this coming Monday online from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Eastern for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available a few minutes after the session ends. And now for the coming week's economic reports. First, remember please we are in the belly of second quarter earnings season and hundreds of companies will be reporting earnings each day. Economic report wise, on Tuesday we have the Case-Shiller Real Estate Index, Consumer Confidence and New Home Sales. Wednesday we have Durable Orders, Pending Home Sales, Crude Inventories, and the all-important FOMC rate decision at 2 p.m. So please stay tuned for that. Thursday, we have jobless claims and natural gas inventories. Friday, we have the GDP, Chicago PMI, and Michigan sentiment. Again, please join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Do not miss out on our limited time discount for Tony's Market Club. Take advantage of this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading knowledge and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.